Hey everybody, Gio here. You from Carlos. And we are coming to you from our home. We're back from Key West. We still have a few more videos from Key West, so stay tuned for those. But Amor, why are we here today? We are here today because this is October 2023, and October is the month of the LGBTQ history. It sure is. LGBTQ History Month. Very cool. So why is that important? Well, while we were in Key West, we had the opportunity to sit down with an amazing national speaker and tell them about the person that we spoke with. We spoke with Greg Bear. Mm -hmm. He is a great person. He speaks around the world about LGBTQ plus issues. And we had the opportunity to sit down and have a chat with him. We sure did. And we talked about all kinds of things. We talked about history. We talked about events affecting the LGBTQI community currently. Um, what else did we talk about? We talked about the, you know, the amazing weekend that we had with the Out Loud group. We sure did. We had such a great time with Out Loud. Shout out to John and Brian and all other 27 men that were there. And most importantly, we talked about another event, an unfortunate event in the history of the LGBTQI community. And we want you to stay tuned all the way to the end of this interview with Greg Baird because we have a very special announcement at the end of this video. And it's something that you can do to help our community. So whether you're part of the LGBTQI community or you're an ally of ours, we hope you find this interview very, very informative, very fun. What else do they find in it? A lot of information about, about him and us. Exactly. <laughs> Some cool stuff coming up. So stay tuned. Greg Baird, international speaker, sitting down with us in Key West. Hey, everybody. I'm Gio. Y Juan Carlos. And we've got Greg over here. Hi, everybody. I'm <laughs> super excited. <laughs> so uh, we're going to introduce you all to Greg, or otherwise known as Gregor Speaks. And we encourage you, we're going to put a link below. Please check out his channel. And uh, <laughs> we're here in Key West at the big Out Loud event, which we've talked to you guys about already. And we're really thrilled to have an opportunity to sit down and talk to you. I am too, and it's so great to meet you guys in person. Yeah, it's great because we've been following each other on social yeah, media. Yeah, I know. For, it's wonderful. And, you know, following you on Facebook, following your channel right. and your journeys, and then finally getting a chance to meet people in person is always... I, it, it's, it's great. And it's nice because, you know, you follow these people uh, on Instagram or wherever it may be, but then you meet them like, uh, it just feel, it feels like I've known you guys longer. Oh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It does, and, you know... Know, like there's no awkwardness you know and I felt like that with the out louder guys too yeah John and Brian have been amazing and just to reiterate again if you haven't watched our other videos on Key West we're all here because of another YouTube couple John and Brian and their channel out loud and they put together this amazing event down oh, here in Key great. West yeah uh, where 20 27 guys from around the actually around the world we can say <laughs> have come together and uh, we're yeah. all here and it's interesting the dynamics and yeah, yeah. And, and like you know the people talk and just you're learning a lot from other people yeah, yeah. it's always nice to mix and meet people and people that follow our channel probably some people that follow you yep and obviously people that follow Brian and John so it's really cool so um, what is your overall impression been of this weekend? Like, how has it been for you? This is my first time here. So, you know, you have like an idea about Key like West. the lay of the land or uh -huh. what it's like. And it's pretty much what I thought. I knew it was going to be a little hot and muggy. I expect that in Florida anyway. But it's just beautiful. That I love like the pool and the tropical stuff and meeting people and just it's, it's chilled out because I live in Chicago. Right. So this is just. A little bit more. Like when I go to Palm Springs, it's just kind of a little chilled out. So you, you make it uh, however you want it to be. Sure. You know? Yeah. The Alexander's guest house is fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah, we did a whole video about our room and the grounds oh. and what a beautiful place. It's detailed. Like when they came and cleaned the room, it's just everything's so... Mm -hmm. I even thanked uh, the person cleaning our room. I was like, God, this is... Yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal. Nice. I actually commented to him, too. I'm one of those crazy people that travels usually with Lysol, and sure. I spray everything down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't feel like I needed to do no. that here, because the place is so clean. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So Even, yeah. like, the breakfast in the morning, is, it's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, they definitely take care of you. Great staff. So, um, for those mm. of you that don't know Gregor, Gregor is a national speaker here in the United States, and he travels around speaking specifically about LGBTQI plus topics. Right. Right? Yep. So talk to us a moment. I'm really curious to know what was the, the motivation for you to become a public speaker? I began speaking in college. Uh, I wasn't even out yet. I was in an LGBT group. So going to like 
residence halls speaking. Mm -hmm. So that was the start of it, but it's kind of progressed since then. But I was just talking uh, earlier to some of the guys. They asked me the same question. And I worked in higher ed, and right around 2000, the end of 2002, I had been at uh, my college where I was at for seven years. So it was going on the end of the seventh year, and I was speaking part-time. Mm -hmm. And so I was director of a lecture series, and I had hosted Judy Shepard, Matthew Shepard's mother. Right. And so uh, I really hit it off with her. Well, I had just spoke at Central Michigan University uh, as one of my programs. Mm -hmm. So a year later, this is after I got to know her, a year later, she's at Central Michigan University, calls me up and said, hey, Greg, do you want to be uh, my, my plus one and come down? Because Dennis, her husband, couldn't be there. So I went to a reception. Uh, I'm giving you a shorter version here because it's kind of long. Uh, but <laughs> I, but I, um, I introduced her uh, back in my old school, which I had been there a year before mm -hmm. speaking, and uh, packed house. And you know, she still cried during the, you know talking about Matt and sure, everything. You know, it was really gut wrenching. But there was like two thousand people in this auditorium. I mean, it was it was wild. So I went up to the balcony because uh, there was only seats left with my friend Tim. And there was a group in front of us um, with band. Remember the banner paper at college? It was on a big roll. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah remember that? Yeah, this yeah. Is so old school. <laughs> yeah, but they they signed it, and it had to been like I don't know, ten feet long sure. from the res hall. And they said, "Hey, can you introduce us to Judy when this is all over?" I go, "Absolutely." So everybody's filing out, and not a dry in the house, you sure. know. So go downstairs. Tim's with me, and I have all these students behind me. They were so cute, you know. I was all excited. So we're walking, so, you know, we're walking downstairs in the theater, everybody's filing out. And over on my left, this was the pivotal point. There's a, a red-haired girl going, Greg, Greg, cute little girl. Uh -huh. Greg, you're like 20-something. And I'm like, hi, how you doing? How you doing? And uh, Tim goes, do you know her? I go, don't know her at all. So I get up to the front, introduce the students to Judy. She comes around. Tim's standing to my right. And... Uh, she comes up out of breath. She goes, oh, my God, I can't believe it's you. And I go, I'm sorry, have I met you before? And she goes, you were here last year speaking, weren't you? I say, yes, I was. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I was at your lecture. And I said, well, thank you for showing up. Okay. She goes, I'm not finished yet. Oh, okay. And I said, oh, okay. And she goes, I wasn't going to come to your lecture at all. She goes, I had no plan. I didn't even know about it and, until I was leaving my dorm and I saw a poster up and I came. And she goes, I know you told all of us to wait uh, about our own, I, I talked a lot about coming out issues. Sure. Uh, so this is like 2000, uh, oh my gosh, 2004, maybe 2003. So um, she goes, I didn't listen to you. I said, you didn't? She goes, no, I, I'm out now and I'm happy. I'm like, well, that's great. She goes, well, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> she goes, I need to tell you why I wasn't going to come to your lecture. Oh, no. I go, what? And she goes, I was leaving with my backpack out of my dorm, and I saw the poster on the door of the residence hall on the way out. And she said, uh, what I didn't tell you is I left two maps to my roommates in the room. I'm getting a chill as I talk about this. Uh, to my roommates on where they would find my body. Oh, my gosh. Uh, because she goes, I was in a relationship with an older female that was emotionally and mentally abusive. I wasn't doing well in school, and I wasn't out to my family. Wow. And she was—I I, had—I was done with life. And she said, um, "I had left the maps of, you know, I was going to be, be behind married housing or a park down in Mount Pleasant." And she said, uh, "I saw the poster on the wall, and said, well, what do I have to lose?'" So she came to my lecture. She said she loved the speech and everything. She goes, I know you told us to not come out right away or you make sure we have like a backup plan, sure. you know, or support. She said, I didn't have any of that. I drove home right after the lecture. It was about an hour away from uh, Mount Pleasant, where the school's at. I came out to my family and she said, you know what? They love me just the same. She goes, I dumped the older female student and I'm graduating in two months. And I always said... If I ever saw you again, I want to thank you for saving my life. Whew. And I, oh, I, to this Not day, me. yeah. <laughs> and sorry. my friend Tim was a wow. puddle on the on the floor. Well, I've never emotional. had anybody in my entire life say thank you for saving my life. And I looked at her, I hugged her, 
it, it was just, and, and what I didn't say is I was in the middle of kind of deciding if I was going to stay in higher ed or I was going to do this full time. Right. And my friend Tim goes, if that doesn't tell you yeah, why you should be doing the rest of your life, you are a stupid SOB. <laughs> and, and so she hugged me. She did a little boop, boop, skip and jump. She ran off, never saw her again. And I, I was just like dumbfounded, like, what just happened here? I felt so blessed and yeah. so wonderful. Uh, it, it's just, that was the point of it just turned. And then I, not too long after that, I told my school, this is what I'm going to do. And uh, knowing very well, it's not like a nine to five job. <laughs> no. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, and, 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 and kind of when people don't understand you don't have that nine to five realm, I always get the question like, what do you really do for work? Right, right, you know, right. so I moved in. And it was hard, you know, the first um, year or two, you know, starting something new. And, you know, I'm 62. So, you know, I, mm. wasn't, I wasn't like 25 starting <laughs> new. But, yeah, I think about her often. That's uh, great. I would love to know what happened to her. But the fact that we have, you know, we talk about the Trevor Project and a lot of youth, uh, sure. LGBTQ plus youth that... Um, are reaching out, and, and especially now with a lot of the rhetoric and the hate, um, it's it's my legacy. That yeah. that's my that's my thing that's going to be. But it was, that was a big point. And I've had several moments after that. But that I tell you, I, I still get emotional talking about her because I can. Your, I can that was your that. catapult. That was your moment. That was like, this is your true calling. Yep, you're going to do absolutely. And, and I've never questioned it since then. Well, good for you. Yeah. Well, obviously, you've made a huge impact not only on that young lady's life, but probably hundreds, if not thousands, of other yeah. youth. I had a friend say, you know, you may have people reach out to you on YouTube or mm -hmm. Facebook that says thank you or, right. you know, give you a quote from the lecture. He goes, he said to me, but just think of all the people that you inspired that haven't said anything. Absolutely. And that puts that in a bigger perspective. Yeah. Like, pretty big. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's definitely, I'm sure it's weighty in many respects to you as well, but to have, like you said, you bring her on stage with you, uh, so that's got to be something that helps to motivate you, right? Yeah. Because, yeah, it can be challenging, I'm sure. Yeah, I, and there. you know, I probably would not be doing the work now, Gio, if I had come from a different family background, because I came from a very bigoted background that mm -hmm. told all the awful jokes at the di dining room table, Yeah. very prejudiced, uh, we had some good morals and values in that, uh -huh. but there wasn't a whole lot of love in my house. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm a very loving, huggy, you know, yeah, kiss, there's kiss a, her. This man exudes her warmth. Kiss kind of guy, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, and it's your chosen family that you have, and um, I feed off of other people's energy and things that they have to say, but especially, you know, everybody sharing their personal stories face-to-face -face, like we do. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that makes all the difference. It does make a difference, and hopefully for you guys watching... Hopefully that impacted you as much as it did me. That's a really Thank powerful, you. powerful yeah. testimony, powerful story. Yeah. I, um, it, and what you're doing changing. is great. So thank you for yeah. what you're doing. Thank you. There. Thank you to both of you. For, and I always for, refer, you know, it's interesting with um, Juan Carlos and I and the development of our relationship and with him being from Costa Rica, you know, we've had many conversations because his upbringing, uh, LGBTQI in another country versus what we went through here in this country. Yeah. Has been completely different. So I'm curious from you getting to meet Greg, what are your, like after the the time that we've spent and you've kind of learned a lot about LGBTQI issues, mm -hmm. what would you consider or what would you uh, be interested to know from Greg from his experiences that's different than what I've told you maybe? Mm -hmm. Any? Uh, mostly like what are the difference that you perceive within generations? Like your generation, my generation, and younger generations. So I always say when I speak that the younger generation needs to sp step up to the plate. <laughs> um, and, 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 you know, we grew up, no internet, no, I right. mean, you know, we had a dial phone in my house growing <laughs> yes. up. I really dated With myself. a long cord on yeah, the Yeah, a long cord that was stretched to, like, <laughs> there was no curl in it anymore. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> I just feel we need to, to, I think our biggest thing right now we have a problem with is the younger generation, the older, need to come together and share personal stories. Not, we do a great job on the internet, sure, but it's the face-to-face. -face. I want to hear you. I want to see what, have that energy. I'm big on energy. Um, 
but it's the younger people that I like to see get more involved uh, than being passive and just thinking like, well, I can do something on the internet and send it out and that's my job. Mm -hmm. You need to be active within your community and, and not be, have any kind of ageism uh, or any kind of isms in being involved. Right. Um, but there's a, there's a big difference, and they need to understand, too, you know, we, we don't talk a lot about our LGBTQ plus history because it's not very pretty. No, it's a very you know? long, challenging, dark, <clears throat> and emotional. And probably for us, we need to have that kind of history spoken. Like when we were younger, I would have loved to know the achievements right. of the LGBTQ plus community. And I never knew anything, you know. So yeah. you've got to have... Uh, other people come forward, and the education for the younger folks to to know that history to move forward. And a lot of stuff we need to know, not to repeat a lot of things, like the Pulse nightclub shooting. We don't want we don't want that to happen again. We need to talk about hate and our hate in our communities. We need to talk about different things throughout history. So right. there's a lot of different kind of things in our community that youth oriented or whatever, but. It's not all about the bar and going out and uh, partying. That that's, that's fun. That's the easy part. Yeah, that's the easy part. But Anyone you have to invest in people, <laughs> invest in the education of people, um, and that and that's and also step away from the news uh, now and then because uh, we're. It always seems like we're living on the edge. Like people are on the right. verge of being angry, and um, a lot of that's the rhetoric and things that we're watching. Sure. We need to be better people. You can hold his hand walking down the street. We remember a time. That was impossible. And I lived in a small town. I, I would have been ran over by a truck or something. You right. know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, too, because we sit here in Key West, Florida, and I remember came here <laughs> in like 1991 and 1992, <clears throat> and it was really my first experience of being in a place where it was completely accepting oh, yeah. throughout this. It was a very, very, I mean, it was very enlightening, number one, and very <laughs> awakening. And, you know, I was a young man and just like, what's happening? I know. <laughs> I be so gay. Um, and just knowing that places like this existed. But, and then now later in life, thinking how much it has changed. Oh, yeah. You know, and then sort of I feel like that, because I've had conversations over the weekend of like, Am I becoming that curmudgeon old man? Like, I remember when. when? <laughs> yeah. So we, yeah. Have to, we have to check ourselves, too, yeah, so do. that we don't offend the younger generation because yeah. there's newer things. But you made an observation yesterday that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, tell him what you had said to me um, when you were talking about... Because we have... Uh, interesting, just to share with all of you, um, John and Brian are in an age gap couple. Obviously, we are in an age gap couple. So there are other like-minded people here, some right. other couples that are also in age gap. And there's some single people here, younger, older as well. And there are several young men here. In, I, when I say young, they're from late 20s, 30s, 40s right. in that age bracket. And then a yep. lot of men in their 50s, 60s, 70s. But you made a comment about what you observed amongst your fellow young people. What did you say? Um, I said that the younger people here are we are a lot more quieter than I agree. The older people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so. then when he said that, he goes, "It's interesting. I noticed the younger people are quieter." And then I made an observation, and I said to him, "I said, you know, what's interesting about that, or as I reflect on it, and tell me, I'm curious your thoughts. We, as you said, we grew up in a different era, <laughs> where we had to go. For example, if we wanted to meet other gay men, we had to go to a gay bar. Yeah, absolutely. We had to engage in conversation. We had to make eye contact first. We had to like talk, which was scary, scary yeah. as heck, yeah, especially yeah. for shy people. I was very shy. Um, really? Really? Believe it or not, but people don't know that. When people, did that happen? <laughs> I see. I, I know. I seem like I have this. But no, I was. Yeah. There. When it came time to being in that environment, right. you know, you're, you kind of go well, inward. Well, if, if you're not out, you're testing the waters, and then are, are they going to like me? I'm going to be rejected. All Is, of those things. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I went through all, I, I, yeah. Am I going to get caught? I thought my, my mom was going to show up in Flint, Michigan <laughs> at the COPA. My mom was going to walk in and, like, grab me. You yeah. know, I was 21. And, yeah, you think of all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, and I but I had said to him, I said, <laughs> I think a lot of it has to do with so the dynamic is we're a group of men 
here at this weekend that are all relatively within the same age bracket within a you know 10 to sure, 15 years. Sure, that's year. true. Yep. And then his group, they're all within, but they've grown up with social media and communicating via and text message. Some of those interaction apps. skills. So they're yeah. they're much more comfortable in the social media world, whereas we're very gregarious and, and now we're in an environment where it's safe, right? We're comfortable. Yep. We're like, oh, we're in our zone. Uh -huh. So we can all, we run up to each other. Hey, like yeah. we've known each other forever. And for him, that's like a foreign concept. Well, it's like when I first got here, on Thursday, you were the first one I saw, and you came up and gave me a hug. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. And I was yeah. To meet so you. I get yeah. that. Yeah. Whereas that's not something that necessarily. No, especially when, and I think it's our, our group uh, in general, that when you get into a new environment, a new group of people, you don't know anyone, you kind of, same as you were saying, uh, tasting the water, uh, and then you kind of come in, try to see what's happening without saying a lot. And that's as, as much as you do. But if you have, if you were in a group with people that you already know, it'd be much different. You just jump in and start talking. Well, and you feel, I'm, I'm you know, very outgoing, but like yeah. you, like what you're saying is I'll go into an area and then I like to like the kind of the lay of the land. Right, right. Get like, a feel for it. Because I told my best friend, I go, this is like a social experiment. And it kind of is. Yeah, you know, ways. like, because I want to see the dynamics, because I'm all about watching people and the dynamics of people. Sure. And things like that. Yeah, that was, it was very important. There was one thing that I wanted, that uh, you had asked me a question that uh, I would like everybody to know. So when you're talking about younger and older um, differences, we have to also think about, you know, their ethnic background, sure. where they came from, yeah. religious background, mm -hmm. things like that. Like, just because... Uh, maybe they're a cis white male or, you know, whatever heritage you have, you have to understand there's a lot of kind of uh, traditions and other things like, you know, spiritual or yeah. not. So there's a, you know, very, a lot of layers. layers absolutely. It's just not a cut and dry, you know, the younger and older, but you have to figure in a lot of other stuff that we carry. Yeah, all of those things. And we've talked about it on our own channel a couple of times. We don't share a tremendous amount personal sure. on our channel. We're much more about travel and travel, adventure and all, food that. and all that good stuff. But we yeah. do like to share because it, you know, it is important, but we, yeah, we obviously in cultivating our relationship, we're, we're not only age gap, but we're racially different. Yep. Latino, gringo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're internationally <laughs> yeah. different. So yeah. we dated long distance for five years. That's amazing. Going back and forth between, and then culturally, it was all of the cultures, the, you know, and I thought, what was fascinating about that experience for us was that we gave each other the room, um, and that was early on. Mm -hmm. Once once I saw that in him, that he was giving me the space I needed, I gave him the space he, that... That's excellent. And that's why we're together today. Because I love we that. Because we were able to... Well, you have good communication. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that's it's, important. I think it was key to try to not force someone else's culture or way to do things yes. mm -hmm. onto the other person. Yeah. If that's the way, the way you do it, it's fine. And if I like it, I might be doing it that way, but also I have my own way to do it. Right. And I might just, you know, keep keep that with me. If that's the way that I do it, I'm going to continue doing it that way. Right. So. And then we allowed each other and accepted those differences and found them ultimately to be strengths in our mm -hmm. relationship. See, isn't that great? Because, because I think when people hear about differences, yeah. they'll think it's, they think it's a negative thing, and right. it's not. Because I, I think that's the biggest problem, like even the United States or the world, you can see, is we often think of, oh, differences, you know, I'm, I'm not gay or I live here or, you know, I don't get it. Well, you just have that communication and you have that understanding mm -hmm. and you'll find out that your differences, there's more things that are alike than different. Right. And it helps you grow as a human. And ultimately, that's what you want in a partner or a lover or a relationship yeah. or a friend. You want people that are going to elevate you in life. Yeah. And you want to raise you people. up. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, that's so wonderful that you guys had that because you had, if you look at you, had, I mean, you know this, you had a lot of obstacles. Oh, yeah. And it would have been so easy to been like, it's great meeting you. That was fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go live your life. We'll keep in touch. Maybe we'll pass again. But there was something so strong that drove us to continue to. And I, and I think that's wonderful for a lot of people when they watch your channel yeah. that they see that. Because it's, it's an inspiration for 
other folks, yeah. Yeah, straight or, you know, LGBT, my, my you know what, yeah. So, yeah, you've touched on the, the, it was one of the questions I wanted to ask you. What, I'm curious with you traveling and talking with groups and obviously young people and everything, what's the, what's the one thing, here we are in 2023, sure. we know that there's so much turmoil, uh, there's a lot of pressure, uh, you know, politically, socially, um, with regard to our community, and there's a lot of angst, I would say, sure. you know, that we're sort of living on a edge again that I haven't seen See, since like the I, 90s, if you will. I agree, yes. Yep. What, so what is what would you say is the one or two things that you feel are bubbling up to the surface right now that you think are the most important issues that we're faced with as an LGBTQI community today? Uh, understanding gender mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and not confusing that with sexuality. Uh, and I always tell people if... Uh, if you, I'll run if you like, I don't get the whole transgender or the non-binary. I just, I don't want to know. Right. I, I had somebody in a corporation, a uh, friend, not when I was there, said, I don't have time to instruct the people that work for me to put like in your uh, email, your email signature, you know, he, him, his, for yeah, me, yeah. that kind of thing. I, I don't have time. And that bothers me because uh, I'm all about inclusion. So the things that are bubbling up, Gender would be uh, one, but then I think people are frustrated uh, on different states passing laws against the transgender community Correct. or the bathroom bill, like, oh my gosh, you know, or drag right. queen story hours, that kind of thing. We all need to just educate one another. I came from a prejudiced family, and I, my dad turned 95 yesterday. So we still talk about different things that he can understand. Uh, it's, it's a matter of sharing our stories and talking about, and, and even that we have our differences, to understand other communities. I don't do the whole, I'm gonna tolerate you. You ever hear that, like, right, tolerance? Right. I don't use that terminology. Because okay. to me, for me, tolerance is you're putting up with something. Right. You know, like, hey, go out, you guys go out to eat a lot. I go out to eat a lot. It's like having a child scream. Oh, we love that, <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's at a table, favorite. and you're like, oh, and the parents are doing things like, okay, we're still going to sit here and tolerate that. So that's kind of my association. I hear you. You know, when I hear that's that word, I kind of cringe. You don't tolerate people. You understand them, and you understand those differences. Um, so, so you don't reach that boiling point. But uh, gender, you know, and, and having laws that protect us, you know, we're at 2023, and we're still talking about a lot of stuff. And we're going, you know, we feel like we could go 10 steps ahead but then we're going backtrack. And right. we always have to know that there's hope. Right. You know, we're a human race, we can do better. I, I was gonna ask you too, um, what do you think, if you could uh, just look back, what do you think your biggest hurdle was, other than the distance when it first happened, but what do you think the biggest hurdle that you... For the relationship? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why don't you answer it and then I'll answer mine, because I think we, I think I know what his answer okay. is. Okay, all right. Curious. Um... I guess the cultural difference. Oh. Yeah. Because that's actually, usually our, let's say, disagreements are more culturally based okay. than age. Even though we, right. or he called our relationship, a uh, age gap relationship, um, I don't see it that way. It's more like cultural differences. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we're both on the same page there. So culturally, um, I think that was one of the biggest hurdles because I had been out and open and completely comfortable. Right. Um, and there was still a journey that he was going through when we first met. And I made a it's conscious... A good way of putting that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I made a... Because it could have been... It would have been very easy for me to be like, okay, if you want to be with me, you need to tell everybody. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but I told him it from the beginning. I was like, that's your journey. I'm here to support it. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to tell you what to do as it relates to that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to lie and say that internally I was like, okay, how long do we cultivate this that if we can't ever necessarily be on the same field? And there's not really a timeline there. And that yeah, was the yeah, big question. Yeah. So that was my struggle, and that was, a, that was me. That's and honest. I think, that, again, that's cultural, mm -hmm. right? Because we're so instant gratification here. We're so like... Let's get it done. Let's go. Mm -hmm. um, the new and improved. Right. Everything's got to be new and improved. Right. It's like oh, a Tide yeah. commercial. And as yeah. he alluded to, um, I think I was more concerned about age gap than he was. Like, he didn't see it. 
I didn't see it when we first met until people pointed it out mm -hmm. to me. Because I've been in age gap relationships before. Mm -hmm. And everybody says, oh, you like the younger. Well, no. Let me, let me put it this way. I'm about... I'm a big chemistry connection guy. No, I like a good face. You, could, you guys have both beautiful faces. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I, I'm big on face, but the personality, the whole package, that's what I find attractive. I don't put a number on it. Right. But the rest of the world does. Does. Yeah. And when I've dated younger, uh, I can't tell you. It, this is probably everything you've heard before, but they'll come up like, had a boy. Oh yeah, you get yeah. all of that. Or stuff. like, who's the daddy? You know, all you know, all of this stuff we've all heard the before. cliches. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, you got yourself a prize. I've heard it all. Yeah. Like how you know? It's, it... Yeah, all of that. And again, that was I think more me. And again, that's cultural because yeah, that's same I think, here. much more here. Um, when I met him, that wasn't even a, like I never thought about dating, or I I was never the person looking younger. To actually, traditionally, I dated older. My whole life. Oh, I always okay. dated guys that were more mature. It was it was all about the connection. When I yeah, met see, I, that's beautiful. Um, that's that's and that's longevity. And then and I don't even think I asked his age for. Pro I don't even know how long. To be honest, it was a while before I was like, "How old are you?" <laughs> you know, I mean, I knew he was younger, right. but I just wasn't a thing. But it's the people on the outside, right? You know, they'll say, "Well, how old are you?" Right. You right. know. Yeah. And then, and then you get the either like, "Oh, that's cool," or like, "Oh, really?" It, yeah. It's that. It's the judgmental stuff, and just be happy for people that have a connection. Yeah. That, you know all these things that you know the right. connection and and it's the friendship. You know, yeah. you can tell you guys like traveling and the friendship and all those kinds of things. And, and that's a great example that you're showing other people. And can you be alone with each other in silence? Right. And, yeah. and be comfortable. And you can. And we can. Yeah, yeah. see, that's great. Yeah, and the funny thing, yeah, I, I don't know if you're aware of this. <laughs> he can be very quiet. We, yes, <laughs> he can be very quiet. I'm much more gregarious, as you could tell. But, yes, yeah. Um, we got married in uh, February of 2020. Oh, you're, what happened my, in March? My birth, my birth month. Oh, yeah. So February 16th, we got married. By the middle of March, one month later, the country was, yeah, the world was down. shutting down. Yeah. And uh, for the first year of our relationship, we had no choice but to really be... And for you to get through that time, both of you? Yeah. Especially with that difference that I told you. He was 24 hours news... Because I was like, oh yeah, you put that in there. I was obsessing yeah. about the about was, COVID. Did so that drive videos. you crazy? Oh, it did. Yeah. I don't know how many videos of how to wash your hands until <laughs> I said I cannot listen to one to another video. After, after yes. Washing hands, washing I know groceries. I wash my hands since I was like five. <laughs> Stop, please. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was definitely um, as we we always say. If we could survive that, we're to get we're we're good. Yes, we're I mean that. Yeah. The, the, the be involved in a relationship, and then that happens right. I mean, right. oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. So anyway, all of that being yeah. Said, when I was trying to date, that was the worst time ever. Yeah, you I know, can't you, you can't. I couldn't imagine being you single can't, during you couldn't that even time. Date. I'm like, thank I God know. I had him by my side to to yeah. keep me sane through that. Yeah, because being older, you're like, well, here's another year I have to give up. You know. <laughs> Yeah, Something yeah. like that. Yeah, it was definitely definitely a crazy time. But, uh, well, Gregor, I can't thank you enough for taking time. Thank you. I love us. talking to you guys. are great. Yeah, yeah thank been, you for taking the time. It's been informative. We appreciate yeah. you watching as always. And here's something that I'm going to do that we never do on our channel, channel, and I think it's important. You've mentioned somebody's name twice during this interview, uh -huh. and that's Judy Shepard. Correct. And those of you who are watching our channel, if you're not familiar with Matthew Shepard or the Matthew Shepard Foundation, I encourage you to do some research. So I'm gonna put a link below, and I'm also gonna put a link below to the Matthew Shepard Foundation. That's great. And if you feel inclined and you're watching our video with Gregor, reach into your pockets and make a little donation to the Matthew Shepard Foundation because it's one of the best organizations for LGBTQI, especially youth and what they do here in the United States to help young people. And it'll be 25 years yeah. October that that murder happened. That's crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and you know, we need to talk about our yeah. history, and that's that's one, because right. that changed a lot. Like, um, even being the LGBTQ community was kind of like, there, there wasn't anything to get them out there. Right. And when that, I remember when that happened, um, 
hate crimes and all sorts of things uh, evolved in a positive way from that sure. off of this awful tragedy. But there's yeah. a lot to be learned there, so thank you for doing yeah. that. All right, we're going to wrap things up here. And again, we appreciate all of you watching. And as we always say on our channel, happiness is... A lifestyle. It sure is. And we are so happy. So thank you guys. And until next time, bye-bye.